Welcome to Working with Health IT Systems, Potential Issues with Adoption and Installation of an HIT System. In this unit, we'll discuss the basics of human behavior, change, and adaptation. Strategies for dealing with barriers to implementation, both human and structural, will also be discussed. This unit deals more with the people side of things, the behaviors and the attitudes, while providing strategies and tools for you to use. The objectives for potential issues with adoption and installation of an HIT system are to identify frequently encountered challenges to adoption and implementation of HIT systems, propose solutions to common problems in the implementation of HIT systems, design a plan to address barriers to implementation of an HIT system. A reading suggested for this unit is by Walsh entitled, quote, The Clinician's Perspective on Electronic Health Records and How They Can Affect Patient Care, end quote, is presented in a lessons learned mode. Walsh begins by making the point that systems often fail because of difficulties with data entry. In reality, what he's really pointing at, and it is just as big an issue today as it was in 2004 when he wrote this article, is that systems do often do not support clinical workflow. Systems that do not support workflow put a barrier between a clinician and his patients and his work. Systems can get in the way. Walsh asserts, quote, technology should com complement and improve clinical care, not impose extra burdens on over already overloaded medical staff, end quote. As discussed in prior units, usability and workflow support are very important aspects, and if the system fails on these two dimensions, your job in encouraging adoption and use of HIT by clinicians and others will be difficult, if not impossible. What about this, quote, lack of the story metaphor that Walsh talks about? The author asserts that humans relate by telling stories and that computer systems push people into pick boxes of rigid terms. Walsh makes the point that this method runs counter to the way that people normally think and interact. The main points on this slide are from the Walsh article. He makes the point that, quote, narratives are essential to a patient's episode of illness, end quote. He also says that, quote, poor communication is often more detrimental to patients than lack of knowledge, end quote. Walsh also says that, quote, computers should enable clinicians to capture these types of narratives easily. His final point is that, quote, the structure of the patient's record strongly influences the ease of information retrieval, end quote. We do know from the research that poor communication is a major contributor to error, and since clinicians and patients communicate by telling stories, the ability, the, the ability to be able to listen and to interpret and then record that story in an EHR is critically important. When you really think about it, taking the patient's story and putting it into an organizational form has really given rise to that tab metaphor that we discussed in a prior unit. It has resulted in many EHR systems be, being organized in similar ways. You will find that most systems look pretty much the same or at least have the same functions. We have the same play on a different stage. The point is that systems fail, not because they do not match the clinical workflow and, not, and do not sufficiently model the way that clinicians think and do. There are many things that can make or break the adoption and installation of HIT. However, most of the critical success factors for implementation fall into one of these three categories user characteristics, system design characteristics, and organizational characteristics. These user characteristics are also called the people problem. These are the individual differences like cognitive styles, personality, demographics, and situational variables. This aspect also includes users' expectations of what the system is going to do for them. We call those the WIFMs, W-I-I-F-Ms, what's in it for me? If you hear people say, what's the WIFM, you will now know the slang. User characteristics also include their attitudes toward change, technology, their job, and things of that nature. System design characteristics are another aspect that can determine the ease of adoption and acceptance and can make the implementation process either a beauty or a beast. 
We've talked about this before in prior lectures. How easy is the system to learn? How usable is it? How good is the graphical user interface or GUI? Was it designed with the user in mind? Remember how we've discussed the clinical environment of high stress, constant interruptions, and how di different groups of users think and organize differently. These are critical success factors for health IT to adoption. The last critical success factor includes the organizational characteristics that can influence adoption. If the boss is not committed or bought into the idea of automation in the environment, then the chances of success are greatly lessened. Conversely, if the environment is full of what we call the digital natives, who grew up with technology and fundamentally think differently about technology than some of those who, of us who were not raised with a computer in our crib, then adoption of HIT may be less of an issue. Ultimately, the organizational culture can make or break the health IT adoption process. The point here is that different flavors of these health IT critical success factors should be acknowledged, understood, and planned for very early in any implementation process. There are several common challenges to adoption and integration of HIT that warrant discussion. When HIT is being implemented, changes in normal ways of doing is inherent. Getting people to change the way they record data can be like trying to get people to change their religion. It's difficult. For many, picking up a piece of paper and writing a note is something they have done for 20 years. Trying to move them to an electronic documentation, especially if they are not used to computing technology and keyboards, can be very tough. Clinicians are also very sensitive about looking slow or incompetent in front of their patients or subordinates, so struggling to type can make them very uncomfortable. This is changing, of course, as be computing becomes more and more mainstream, but it is likely that almost all of you will have had the experience of getting snapped at by someone who has not shifted into mainstream computer use yet. Have patience. For some, the magnitude of the change is much greater than others. Many clinicians often find it easier to record in free text, as was mentioned earlier when discussing the importance of stories in healthcare. But as it has been said, free text isn't. Isn't what? It isn't free. The actual costs that are incurred from free text are very high. Reading handwriting, understanding nuance, extracting quality measures from free text is next to impossible, and having a root canal could probably be more fun. The infamous Patient had a good day that you may see in a narrative note. Well, what the heck does that mean? We have structured, we have structured text, pick lists, and the like, which have both good and bad dimensions. Clinicians will balk at the no notion of trying to represent the richness of a patient presentation in a pick list. It's very difficult to take a living human being and represent him in a series of pull-down lists. However, when there is a need for concise data in rapid order to be able to meet a regulation or qualify for an incentive or identify a patient at risk for a certain condition or side effect, the drudgery and difficultness of wandering through shelves and shelves of paper charts and free text soon makes one frustrated for not using a structured way to capture and store the data in the first place. In short, structured data can be difficult on the front end but generating reports and extracting data from digital records is much easier, well, at least most of the time, than manual chart review. The point is made in the Walsh article that reading text on a computer screen is up to 40% slower than reading printed text. This fact has bearing on clinical use and impact. In short, the order, the speed, and the manner in which an EHR displays informa information can really influence decision making. Walsh said, quote, if the computer is used to generate output, the layout and structure of the reports are important as this can influence clinical decisions in sometimes fundamental ways, end quote. Think about this a little bit. The layout and structure of the reports are important as this can influence decisions in sometimes fundamental ways. Take a look at the stop sign image on the slide. That stop sign is probably near a shopping mall, possibly trying to influence the driver to divert into the shopping center. Another example of layout and presentation of information that could influence decision making is called the primacy effect. Look at these two examples. 
which one do you think what more people would choose as a medication they would be willing to take for their diabetes? Choice A, diabetic medication X, or choice B, diabetic medication Y? If you chose A, you are right, even though both of these descriptions describe the identical drug. This is something called the primacy effect, and it's related to the order of presentation. So you can see that choice A started off with a positive wording, this medication is effective. Where choice B started off with, this medication may cause headache and nausea. In this particular study, by Nito, Chan, and Chan, significantly more people chose A even though the descriptions are identical. It all has to do with what you read first, what you see first, the primacy effect. So what does this have to do with HIT? Well, the way that an EHRS or Computerized Patient Record System, P CPRS, presents or displays the data will influence clinical decisions. If there are two drugs that have the exact same effect, then maybe a design feature of the system like the CPOE would be to present the least expensive one first. This cuts both, both ways, of course, because people can be influenced in negative ways as well, and there is a chance of mischief here. Just be aware of the primacy effect and how presentation either on a paper, on a sign, or in an EHR can be used to influence behavior. Other challenges to adoption and integration of HIT include issues about funding. Although the high-tech incentive payments to meaningful users of qualified EHRSs have taken some of the wind out of this argument, there is still pushback. According to an article in a 2010 issue of Psychiatric News, quote, Officials at CMS estimate the EHR system adoption or upgrades of existing systems to meet federal standards will cost, on average, about $54,000 per physician employee in a practice, while annual maintenance will cost an average of $10,000 per physician employee, end quote. Many clinicians feel that they're going to get stuck with the tab, but the major benefactors are going to be insurance companies and the government. This may have some element of truth to it, although it's a good idea to remember that you can't manage what you can't measure, and you can't measure what's trapped in paper data cemeteries. As mentioned earlier, workflow and culture are two key barriers to adoption. Culture eats strategy for lunch. There's also a fair amount of turnover in healthcare. Turnover is one of the things that leads to lower adoption. If all the time is spent in training people as they come in and out through the revolving door, there's less opportunity to move past the, tra past the train up stage and into independent and adventurousome use. We've discussed the challenges, but what might be some of the solutions you can use? The article by Adler is very handy and a practical article that will be helpful for those of you who end up supporting HIT adoption efforts in provider offices and small clinics. If you look at these three T solutions of team, tactics, and technology, you will notice that these three T's will fit almost any setting, although they were written in relation to a family practice EHR implementation. The solutions offered on the slide should work in a large urban setting, a small safety net clinic, or a three-member practice office. It says in the technology co column, have a disaster recovery plan and test it. Everybody needs a disaster recovery plan. It doesn't matter whether you are a small facility or a giant one. It is often said that there are two kinds of people in the world, those who have lost data and those who are going to lose data. Remember that and go back up your files. Look in the middle column, tactics. Note the advice, plan, 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 and train, train, train. And wherever you go, don't go live on a Monday. Seems fitting advice almost no matter where, where you go. In column one, team, the author lists establish realistic expectations, which is incredibly important. If people think that the EHR is going to solve all their problems, then they are in for a big letdown. You really have to temper your users' expectations. Perhaps the most important is the advice, don't try and implement an EHR in a dysfunctional organization. You should save these three T's because they are very, very good advice for some solutions and strategies for dealing with difficulties of implementation and adoption. The intervention strategies can be used as you develop a plan to overcome the barriers that we've already discussed. If you think about potential barriers before they happen, 
you will be more prepared to intervene. A stitch in time saves nine. You can take out the word physician and substitute it with user or stakeholder or something else to customize it to your audience. It will apply in almost all circumstances except in the case of incentives. Although incentives may work for physician groups, it may not work for other stakeholders. Often nurses and other allied health professionals do not have the luxury of an incentive and they are just required to do it as part of their job performance. Look at each of the strategies. Just take a few moments to look at the perceived barriers and possible interventions. Make sure you plan in advance, think about your change process, your organization, time issues, technical issues, finance issues, and have a plan in mind to address these bottlenecks before they occur. The URL to a table is available in the Trevidi et al. online paper linked on the references slide at the end of this lecture. Here are some links to an absolute treasure trove of tools that are very useful. We really could spend an entire semester teaching you about all of these skills that you may need to call upon the world in the, in the world of HIT as you work to encourage adoption and implementation. But even if we spent a whole semester teaching this, we would just be skimming the surface and there's just no way we can teach you all that you need to know. The best thing to do is to teach you where to find the answers. These sites contain very deep collections of tools that you might find useful as you get out into the HIT world or maybe in some of your other classes. Remember that they're here and tuck them into your toolbox. Don't go out and reinvent the wheel. Create a survey, checklist, or whatever. These tools and others will help you get to the level of HIT adoption that our country needs. This concludes Lecture 9 of Potential Issues with Adoption and in Installation of an HIT System. In summary, the goals of this unit were to identify frequently encountered challenges to adoption and implementation of HIT systems, to propose solutions to common problems in the implementation of HIT systems, and then to think about how to address barriers to implementation of an HIT system. In reaching these objectives, we discussed why systems fail and gained a deeper understanding of the three categories where critical success factors for implementation fall user characteristics, system design characteristics, and organizational characteristics. Several common challenges to adoption and integration of HIT were discussed. For example, recall we talked about how difficult change is, particularly when that change is accompanied with the use of an unfamiliar technology that threatens the confidence of the user. Culture, funding, turnover, and workflow, all are aspects that can interfere with HIT adoption. Lest you think that we would only cover the challenges, we also provided resources where practical strategies can be accessed, the three T's, and then provided a series of links to publicly available tools that can help you on your way.